when a signal is transmitted on a communication channel then due to noise and other effects there could be phase uncertainty in the received signal. We have learnt coherent binary FSK modulation schemes and also seen how to demodulate binary FSK. But in the demodulation scheme which we studied earlier, we assume that the receiver was synchronized to the transmitter in the sense that there is no phase uncertainty. The question is that if there is a phase uncertainty then how do you take care of it? If you still want to do the demodulation using coherent modulation scheme then we need to estimate the phase of the received signal. But if you want to avoid the complexity of the phase estimation then we can deploy or adopt what is known as non-coherent demodulation technique in which the phase uncertainty is taken care of. So, today we will study non-coherent optimum receiver for the binary FSK modulation technique. In the previous class we learnt that given a transmitted signal which is a sinusoid of a frequency FC then if the received signal has the phase uncertainty given by theta with the additive white Gaussian noise and if you are interested in the sufficient statistics R1 and R2 which are the projections of the received signal onto the orthonormal quadrature carriers phi 1 t and phi 2 t shown here then we can find out the joint PDF of R1 and R2 and it was shown that the expression involves the modified basal function of the first kind. We also studied that in order to obtain the square root of the squares and summation of the sufficient statistic, we can take the received signal and pass it through a filter HT which has an impulse response which is a sinusoid over a duration from 0 to TB and if we sample the output envelope at T equal to KTB then we obtain the square root of R1 squared plus R2 squared. Now, we will use this result for our study on non-coherent binary FSK. So, non-coherent binary FSK has two signals in the sig message signal set given by S1 t with the frequency F1 and another signal S2 t with the frequency F2. For symbol 1 we transmit the frequency F1 sinusoid and for symbol 0 we transmit the sinusoid with frequency F2. Both are over the duration Tb and we will assume that S1 t and S2 t are orthogonal. So, we have studied this earlier that for non coherent orthogonality the difference between F1 and F2 should be integral multiple of 1 by Tb. So, now let us try to find out the optimum receiver 
for transmission of the signals on a communication channel where there is phase uncertainty. So, our model would be again additive wide Gaussian noise channel with 0 mean Gaussian noise and power spectral density given by italic n by 2. Our received signal would be given by the sinusoid with phase uncertainty in the term theta plus additive white noise. This is for if we have transmitted 1 and if we have transmitted 0, the received signal would be of frequency f 2 with additive white Gaussian noise. Now, given this received signal, it is very easy to see that the orthonormal basis signals which can be used to obtain the sufficient statistic for our decision making process would consist of the following four orthonormal basis signals. The this set phi 1 i and phi 1 q will take care of the representation of the sinusoid at the frequency f 1 with the phase uncertainty theta. And this orthonormal signals will take care of the frequency f 2 with a phase uncertainty. So, the received signal would be projected on all, all this four orthonormal basis signals and the vector would be as follows. We have the RT signal and the projected vector is R with the components R 1 i, R 1 q, R 2 i, R 2 q. R 1 i will be the projection of R t on phi 1 i t and similarly R 1 q would be the projection of R t on phi 1 q t and similarly for the other components. And these are the expressions for obtaining this four components of the vector R. Now, let us look at so this four components now they are sufficient statistics for our decision making process. Now, let us see what are these outputs when we transmit a particular signal at the transmitter. So, let us take first the case of transmission of symbol 1 in which a case we will transmit the sinusoid with frequency f 1. Now, when we take the receive signal, it will have this four projections. Since the signal transmitted is 1, the first two components of the vector r will have the contribution from the signal and cos theta and sin theta is because of the phase uncertainty at the receiver. And other two components will be consisting of only the noise because these two components will get the contribution from the signal only when there is a transmission of 0. So, similarly we will find out what are these components when we transmit the symbol 0. In that case those four components would be as follows. So, we see that the first two components of the vector r have only the contribution from the noise whereas, the third and the fourth components of the vector r have the contribution from the transmission due to the symbol 0. Okay. Now, note that all these noise components w 1 i, w 1 q, w 2 i and w 2 q are uncorrelated 
Gaussian random variables with zero mean and variance given by italic n by 2. And since they are uncorrelated Gaussian random variables, it also implies that they are statistically independent. So, now we need to find out the joint PDF of the components of the received vector under the condition that one is has been transmitted and also calculate the joint PDF of these four components under the condition when 0 has been transmitted. Once we get this joint PDF then we can find out the maximum likelihood ratio and to do that we will proceed as follows. The first thing is that we compute the joint PDF of the four components of the vector r given that one was transmitted. Now, as mentioned earlier all this are uncorrelated Gaussian random variables. So, we can write this as follows the joint PDF would be equal to the product of the joint PDF of R 1 i R 1 q given one was transmitted and the joint PDF of R 2 i R 2 q given one was transmitted, but joint PDF of R 2 i R 2 q given one was transmitted is the product of the conditional PDF of R 2 i given one was transmitted multiplied by the conditional PDF of R 2 q given one was transmitted. Now, to find out this conditional PDFs it is very simple. Now, to find out the joint PDF of R 1 i R 1 q given one was transmitted we will use the result from our earlier class. So, joint PDF of R 1 i R 1 q given one was transmitted is evaluated using the same approach as studied earlier and we based on that result this result which we have derived earlier we will use this result and we can write the joint PDF of R 1 i R 1 q given one was transmitted as this expression here. Now, given this expression we can write the, the joint PDF for all the four components together given one was transmitted this is a conditional joint PDF it would be of this form. This has been obtained by just plugging in the appropriate PDFs. Now, similarly we have to find out the conditional joint PDF of the four components of the vector r under the condition that 0 was transmitted. So, whatever we have studied so far we can extend to the case of obtaining the conditional joint PDF given 0 was transmitted and that expression would be given as shown here on this slide. Now, if we assume that the symbols are equiprobable then in this case the optimum detector or receiver or demodulator would be to compute the likelihood ratios of the two conditional PDFs. And if we do that we will get the following expression here. It is important to note that other factors which are there associated with the joint PDF 
will cancel out. So, if you look at this too, this factor will cancel out with this. Similarly, this factor will cancel out with this and this factor will cancel out with this. So, this is in a numerator and this is in a denominator. So, what is left out in the numerator is only this term and then the denominator would be only this term. Right? Okay. So, our decision rule would be now that if this ratio is larger than 1, then I decide in the favor of 1. So, I will take the decision that 1 has been transmitted and if this ratio is less than 1, then my decision would be in the favor of symbol 0. So, now this Basel function is a monotonically increasing function of its argument. So, what this implies that we can simplify our decision rule to the following rule. So, this becomes our test statistics now. So, using this test statistic we can take the decision whether 1 was transmitted or 0 was transmitted. Now, to obtain this test statistic we could use the projections of RT on phi 1 IT and phi 1 QT and then take the output and square them and sum them up and then take the square root. But we have learnt that the same thing could be obtained by passing the signal RT through a linear time invariant system which has an impulse response which is a sinusoid over a duration of 0 to TB and then sample the envelope of the output at the correct instances say T equal to KTB and at that instance the envelope will be same as the quantity given here either on the left hand side or the right hand side. Correct. So, we will use this idea for and that case we will get the optimum demodulator which is as given on this slide. So, we have RT and it passes through a bandpass filter which is centered at F1 and the impulse response of that bandpass filter centered at F1 would be nothing but a cosine sinusoid with a frequency F1 over a duration 0 to TB. And similarly to RT is passed through another bandpass filter centered at F2 with this impulse response. And then both these outputs are passed through the envelope detector and these are sampled at appropriate time. So, T equal to KTB the sampling instance. The output of this would be the square root of the summation of the squares of the sufficient statistics. And then you compare this with this. If is this is larger than this, I decide one has been transmitted, otherwise it is 0. Now, we will calculate the probability of symbol error for the non-coherent binary FSK case. We will assume that we have transmission of equiprobable symbols. So, that implies that the probability of error can be computed as the conditional probability of error given transmission of any message signal SIT and without loss of generality we will assume that SIT to be S 1 T. So, we will compute the conditional probability of error given S 1 T transmission has taken place. Now, an error will occur 
if the channel noise wt is such that the quantity on the left hand side is larger than the quantity on the right hand side of this inequality. Now, let us define L2 as the square root of this quantity and L1 as the square root of this quantity. This new definitions will help us to simplify our calculation. Now, we are required to calculate this conditional probability of error and to do that first we will need given that S 1 t has been transmitted what is the probability of this random variable L 2 being larger than the random variable L 1 for some specific value of L 1. So, we will need to integrate the PDF of the random variable L 2 over L 1 to infinity. Now, L 1 is equal to square root of this quantity and and L 2 is the square root of this quantity. Now, R 2 i and R 2 q are Gaussian random variables with 0 mean and variance italic n by 2. Now, from the theory of probability, we know that the square root of the sum of the squares of two random variables with 0 mean and variance italic n by 2 is nothing but the envelope and this is Rayleigh distributed. So, the PDF of L 2 is given by this Rayleigh distribution. So, we have to compute this probability which is integrating this quantity over L 1 to infinity and it is very straightforward if we integrate we get exponential of minus L 1 squared by italic n. Now, we have the probability of error given L 1 that is equivalent to probability of error given R 1 i and R 1 q. So, in this expression instead of L 1 squared I substitute L 1 squared to be R 1 i squared plus R 1 q squared. This will simplify our integration process as we will see soon. Now, to calculate this conditional probability of error given S 1 t, I will require to compute the this quantity which is the conditional probability of error given R 1 i R 1 q and the joint PDF of R 1 i R 1 q and then we will have to integrate this over the domain of R 1 i and R 1 q. Now, R 1 i and R 1 q they are uncorrelated Gaussian random variables. So, the, the joint PDF of this would be equal to the product of the two individual PDF because uncorrelated Gaussian random variables imply statistical independence. Now, we know that probability of R 1 i and R 1 q are Gaussian PDFs with the mean of root e and 0 respectively. So, using this expression and using the PDFs for R 1 i and R 1 q, we can write this expression as written here. And now, we do little manipulation with this term out here, we try to complete the 
square by rewriting this term as as shown here on the right hand side of this equation. If we use this relationship for this term out here and substitute there and then integrate over the domain of r 1 and r 1 q, we will get the conditional probability of error given s 1 t and that is what we will do next. So, this conditional probability of error given s 1 t would be equal to the solution to this integral correct and we just substitute the values out there and separate out the two integrals. Here we have used the property of a Gaussian PDF of mean of root e by 2 and the variance italic n by 4 and similarly here this we, we have used the property of the Gaussian random variable mean to be 0 and its variance to be italic n by 4. So, we get this to quantities and simplifying simplifying this expression after plugging in this two values out here, you will get the probability of error for the non coherent binary f s k to be of this. And now, remember that in this case, this expression is equivalent to the following expression because in this case, the signal energy is the same as bit energy. So, this is the final expression which we get for the probability of error for the optimum receiver for the non coherent binary f s k. Now, the results which we have derived for the non coherent binary f s k can be extended to non coherent emery f s k. In principle, this can be extended to any non coherent emery orthogonal signaling scheme. Now, we will extend the concepts of non coherent binary f s k to non coherent version of phase shift keying popularly known as DPSK and this we will do next time. Thank you.